Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting and I am, I'm like super pumped, I'm getting excited. This is going to be such a fun video because today we're talking all about color mixing in lights, how to make color out of lights because depending on what kind of light you have, and these are three very distinct types that have different ways of making colors, uh, the way that this is going to work is going to vary quite a bit and it really impacts how you work with stage lighting and how you get the most out of the gear you have or the gear that you acquire or you buy. Knowing some of the stuff that we're going to teach today is going to help you make the right decisions when you do go to purchase. And when you do that, there's no better place than learn stage lighting gear. That's us. So, what are we talking about? We have three lights here. They all mix color differently. So, how do they work and why does it matter? So, first and foremost, we have a beam fixture here. I'll go ahead and turn it on. This is called the Dominar uh, X, and it's from uh, our partner brand, Learn Christmas Lighting. And it's a waterproof beam light, really good for outdoor stuff. Uh, really nice fixture. And it like most beam fixtures, not all beam fixtures, uh, the Elation Darts 360, check out the video on it here, has RGB. But like a lot of beam fixtures, it uses a color wheel. Meaning that, as we scroll up this channel here on our console, we get a variety of different color options to select from. Right, if we scroll down to the second part then, we will get to a continuous color where we're able to create split colors. Let's find one that looks better than that. Where we're actually able to grab two colors on that color wheel. And if we go over here, we can actually see it in the very crooked side camera looking at our mess. But you can see it through the haze. You get two colors separated on the color wheel. And on a surface, that's going to look even different as well. A color wheel is on the least expensive type of spot and beam fixtures you're going to see this and pretty much all beam fixtures actually um, but for spots it's going to be on the less expensive end you're going to see color wheels um the benefits of the color wheels are that you get really saturated really intense colors that have typically a pretty good amount of throughput to them. about the most light gets through and, and makes the color as is possible they're efficient they're, they're tuned to the fixture the downside, of course, is that, you know, when you go to change a color like this, it just flips, right? There's no smooth transition. It's kind of ugly. But then the other upside is the fact that, yes, if you go to the split color side, you can get split colors like this magenta yellow, which looks really nice, especially if your fixture happens to have a prism, right, that you can mix it up. And then say we go ahead just real quick and stick it on our wall. We'll go ahead and scroll it over there. When you do have a prism and you stick it on a surface with a split color, you actually get some really interesting stuff here, like this. You get something you can project onto a surface. It looks pretty cool. Let me just turn it down so it looks a little not so blown out. You know, that's what it looks like. Um, split colors are able to give you something that you can't get with other systems. But when it comes to it, the biggest downside of a beam fixture or of a fixture that has a fixed color wheel is just that fact that you're, you, you don't have a transition between your colors. If you start, for example, over here, like let's just come back to where we were, right? You start over here at this color and you want to go to the other side of the color wheel. You just flip through four colors to get there. It doesn't look that great. It's not a good transition. So if it's not like a fast paced event, you know, you're going to want to turn the fixture off, right? And change the color and turn it back on like that. And sure, you can do that with some time. You can have it fade in. You can get around it. But it just means you have to work harder in your programming to make it look nice. Okay. Next, let's go ahead and in a similar vein, look at the Volux Spectra 300. Now, the Spectra is a CMY mixing spot type fixture. Okay, so let me actually take him and move him over to the wall so we can look at both. By the way. Okay, so we can obviously see it through the air here. Just pull his brother out of the way. And then we'll open him up nice and wide. Great fixture with how wide it opens up. Actually, we'll, we'll stick it in the middle just so that we have some intensity out of it here. 
um, but we also see it on our wall. And then in terms of color on a fixture like this, most of your spot fixtures, like your beams, are going to have a color wheel. So he has a color wheel. It's got different colors in it. We could probably put both screens up here so you can see that. You know, we could do all the split colors, all the normal stuff, just like the beam fixture. Typically in the spot fixture, when you do have a split color like on a surface, like this one is tuned a little better, just where the optic is a little bigger at the point it hits the colors. So when you see it hit the wall like so, there's no gap between the two colors. It's just one color to the other. Um, there's no space or any weird spot in the middle. But you know, other than that, it still is a color wheel. It still has ugly transitions, etc. But the Spectra has CMY color mixing as well. So CMY color mixing is what you do when you have a white source fixture, so that's going to be in this case an LED or in many other cases a discharge lamp. And then you have cyan in a variable color flag on a motor inside the fixture, okay? You have magenta and then you have cold place color, right? It was all yellow. And with those three colors, essentially, if you go just on a color picker for laziness's sake, you can make pretty much any color out of that light. That's the benefit. Now, let's talk about the downsides of CMY. The, the biggest downside of CMY is that you're starting with white and you're subtracting, right? It's subtractive color mixing. So this red, for example, compared to the full white, and you can see it really easy here in the beam, is night and day difference in terms of brightness, right? White, red, you know, not all that bright. But if we then also compare it to color wheel red, color wheel red is going to be brighter, it's going to be more vibrant than your mixed red on your CMY. So what does that tell us? What that tells us is that, you know, with CMY, we can make any color we want. Rainbow on the color wheel here, you see them all. The closer you are to just using one of those flags, to just a cyan or a, a light blue, just a magenta, you know, just a yellow, the better it looks. Some colors like, you know, greens especially, I bet, on discharge fixtures, but even in LED, it's not super bright on the output because you're filtering so much light out. And so when you're thinking about color mixing in your shows, you know, when you have a CMY fixture, and we'll talk more about this in a second, you may not want to put the primary red, green, and blue in there because they're subtracting so much light that you're not going to have as much output as opposed to, you know, just taking it over to cyan or taking it over to yellow it's, or magenta. You know, you're going to have the most output out of those colors. Okay, the one notable exception in the spot fixtures are the Elation Fuse series, where you have a red, green, blue, magenta, amber array um, inside the spot, and so you're getting additive color mixing. In those fixtures, unlike a CMY fixture, and CMY fixtures are great, and I mean, you can, at the time of this recording, you can get like two of these for the price of one of those, actually a little more, but, you know, with a white source spot, your white and your light colors are super bright, your deep colors are not all that bright. Granted, it's how we've been doing lighting for years. You know, when I started, we had gels you put on white source fixtures. Uh, you know, it's the same type of process, and that was like normal. But when you have a fixture that has RGB type color mixing and additive color mixing, a lot of the time your deeper colors and your whites are going to be closer in terms of brightness. They're going to be more similar. So let's take a look at that. So now we grab our friend the Volux Sisma. As we said, apologies for not having enough room on my table. This is an RGBW fixture. The first thing you might notice is when I bring it up to full and I've got it shooting over there across the room, you're going to notice here that, actually we'll just go to the sidewall again nuke my air conditioner uh, not really you're gonna notice that we're here all the way narrow but even you know if we go to the middle of the zoom that when we bring it up to full we bring all the leds to full it looks pinkish why because rgb led systems often can do reds and pinks just a little bit brighter if you bring all the leds to full now many fixtures um not this one interestingly enough i don't think but many fixtures have a calibration mode where you can put that fixture in a calibrated color mode and when you bring it to full you get kind of a crisp middle white and not something that's pinkish but regardless even with a fixture like this i could just go and start subtracting red right 
and sure there's some less output but if i tune it in right there it's pretty close to the color temperature of the front light and literally if i just pull out some some green and minus some blue now i've got a pretty good neutral white pretty close to our main video light here just a little bit warmer and yeah i've sacrificed some output but not all that much but where rgb sources thrive when they're on surfaces is in that color mix so if i take actually let me take my spectra back to full okay and we're gonna mix a blue right so blue is a pretty deep color on a fixture like that and we've got it there on our wall you can see it there and then we go back to our sisma and we make that a deep blue okay and we're gonna see that on the wall on the surface here that this guy our spectra our spot fixture is it's a similar brightness but when we bring them both to white we're gonna see that the spectra just blows it out of the water it's hard to see here actually let me just take them both to 50 percent and you can see you know the this one's blown out in a little more natural this one the spectra and you can adjust the pwm rate on that um, but this one is just a little is just not as bright so what does that tell us well that tells us that like the difference between the deeper mixed colors like a deep blue a deep red and the white is not as much in RGB sources typically. So the deep colors are not as filtered out, right? If, if, if the Sysma was a larger unit and we were looking at a unit that in white was equal brightness to the Spectra 300 or close to it, we would see the deep colors of the RGB source fixture to be the additive source, to be brighter than the uh, subtractive, the CMY color mixing. And, and that's the biggest thing to, to put home with this is that in lighting when you're programming when you're working on events it's not just about going okay here's the color you know okay put this color on this light but if you take the time to actually tune your design and your programming to get the most out of every light then most of the time i'm going to recommend putting your deepest colors not in your cmy sources but in your RGB, your RGBW, your RGB Lime, your RGB White Amber UV sources, whatever your fixtures have, you're going to want to use those, the, the additive color mixing fixtures for your deep colors, and use your subtractive fixtures for your less deep colors and the colors that are closer to cyan, magenta, and yellow. And when you do that, uh, most of the time, again, you don't have to do it all the time. But most of the time, it's going to make your designs, it's going to make your lighting look better because you're getting more brightness on average out of each fixture. You're just using each light to the very best of its abilities. And then last but not least, of course, those fixtures with the color wheels are great for adding punch, are great for adding impact, but you have to be careful and think about your transitions because you don't want to pull yourself, have only this fixture on, you know, with a color wheel go into a slow song, need to change from like a red to a blue and not be able to do it smoothly, right? Without turning the light off, right? You want to be planning for that. So, you know, when I'm programming, it's like, hey, you know, primaries most of the time is going to be your CMY or your RGB source. When a song fades out, we might leave just the RGBs on. Be able to change that color wheel, get it ready for when we kick it back on. Or if it's a fast song, who cares? Change it to the beat of the music. It'll look cool right <laughs> so um, hopefully you guys have gleaned something have learned something from this video on color mixing oh actually one more thing before we dive into it um, i want to show you guys here on our surface what happens when you do mix colors together so when you have fixtures on a surface and this is something to be aware of that are pointing in the same place okay onto the same surface that's close enough if they're the same color, of course, they're going to look alike. But say we put them in opposite colors, like red and green here, right? We've got them in red and green. We'll just manually pan or tilt <laughs> for a little Venn diagram there. And you can see they're going to mix together on impact when they hit that surface. Okay, and so that is something to be aware of. Also, if you're in a large space where audience members are far from the lights and you have two lights that are next to each other and they're in exactly opposite colors, 
they're going to tend to and start to blend together a little visually and turn a little bit kind of dirty where they they aren't as clean of a look as you might like whereas if you take your group your fixtures in groups of twos or fives one color two color you'll be able to see a little more separation it'll look a little bit more impactful but anywho I hope you guys have enjoyed this video on color and learned some new things about the type of color mixing between different fixtures or just color changing and how they impact you when you program your lighting. If you're looking for more and you're brand new to lighting, grab our free guide over at LearnStageLighting.com. It's going to walk you through how to get started with lighting. Or if you already use lighting and you're just looking to add some stuff to your rig, Learn Stage Lighting Gear is the place to do it. We would love to serve you. Our gear experts are in the inbox and here on YouTube, like me. And what we love to do is hear about your space. Make recommendations of solid, really good fixtures that are going to be really beneficial to you. And then we get you your personalized price. If that sounds good and you're in the U.S., hit us up over at Learning Stage Lighting Gear via the contact page. Or just add some stuff to your cart. If any of these fixtures, for example, tickle you and you're like, hey, I want to see what my price is going to be on those, get a quote for multiple, do it. Just submit it right through. We turn those around quick and we love to help people get fixtures like these and all sorts of other stuff because we always look at all the brands and make to you our best recommendation. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. See ya.